Israel, which are the Jewish kids, because of their so immature, reacted with the others, as I know. So they were all in the playground, and all the rabbi did. He shot a shot.
with Dr. Sawyer. But here is something, whenever I don't get the opportunity very much, but when all my family gets together, I go, oh my goodness, my kids and my grandkids are all together. Those who are like, like, sometimes I might go up here, I'm so happy. And then when we're at home, I say, look, I just, I don't have this opportunity very much, but let me tell you, Mary Frost and great wisdom. That's not to do that. No, but get some good wisdom that I had to try to tell them. But imagine, here's Moses. He's been talking to the people for 40 years. He's their about to enter into the promised land, and he realizes, oh my goodness, we're going to go to the promised land. Now I'm getting them, where are they going to be? This is my last opportunity to address the children of Israel as a whole. Think about that. Think about what he was going through. I'm not, if you ever thought about that, I'm not going to be able to speak to him. Hey, children of Israel! This is a one-time thing. By the way, I have a microphone here. If anybody would like to add something to it, this is not for our audience dialogue. So if you say, hey, you know, I agree with this. I thought of you have a picture. Where's the microphone? We have it around here someplace? Uh, they're going to get it in your place here. So here's, there's the guy who did it about to the promised land. Listen to the laws and rules that I'll instruct you to use. And you shall keep the laws and commandments that I command you today. Observe the commandments. Observe all the laws. And I notice, thank you, you got it. But I notice that there's almost like three different speeches. The first speech starts off with some great things. Now listen to Israel. He's trying to, he's pulling out his heart. You guys are going to be separated. I'm about to die. I'm not going to be able to talk to you anymore. I remember before my dad passed away, actually August 16th, the anniversary of his passing, the second half, he called us all together. He says, serve the Lord. You know, I'm so glad that everybody's a believer, but everyone from my siblings are in ministry. And so he was a missionary to Belize, one of the children of our pastors, and I'm a rabbi, and you know, we, we can get involved uh, in the, the word of God. And here, he poured out his heart. He says, I'm going to thank the Lord, serve the Lord. Here Moses was doing the same thing. Now listen to Israel, and you shall keep the laws. He signed them. He says, Here are Israel, the laws and the rules. I have heard the plea that the people, these people have made. Remember, it's just going to Hashem. Hashem is actually saying, I have heard your pleas. And this is so important for us to understand as a theological point, is because a lot of times people will say, Somebody actually told me one time and said, I went to this particular church, they told me if I get X amount of dollars, I'll get my relative out of this particular place in the past way, and they will go into heaven. But right now they're in a, in a, a state that's not good. No, 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 no. So uh, it says, the Lord doesn't hear your prayer first. You only hear it when it's doing for you. Oh, oh, I'm here to tell you. The Bible says, I have heard the plea that these people have made. So I'm here to tell you, when you go to the Lord, the Lord will hear your prayers. So you praise God. That's a very important theological point. Then it goes, and this is a destruction of all the rules. And this is time where he prays as well. Therefore, observe faithfully the destruction of the law rules. So he says that three different speeches and he's about to give. Then I'm pleading with the Lord at, at that time saying, Oh Lord God, you have begun to show your knowledge to you because I want you to taste these verses. Please do this. Taste the verses and then give them to your system. Oh Lord, you have begun to show your servant your greatness. You have begun to show your servant your greatness. There is a, a, a teaching that every time, you know, the angel will say, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. What is Kadosh mean? Kadosh. And they're in the presence of the Lord. Now to Murray, I was teaching there when Tony says, I had a dream. Now it's transferred to heaven. And I heard the angel say over and over, I wrote this word out. Is this word God or should I mean? It's a thousand years of that means holy. But the angels are saying, holy, holy, holy. But every time God reveals a little bit more of who he is, the angels say, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. That means that we're going to be singing for eternity. Now this is going to make your mind explode.
understand that principle. So, oh Lord, you have begun to show your servant your greatness. Oh my goodness, isn't that a great statement? You guys, you have begun to show your servant your greatness and your mighty hand. Notice here, there's a mighty hand for what God has ever given or on earth. Who can do anything? Why the Lord is here to the first people because God is a jealous God and He wants you to give praises only to Him. So we cry out to God, Dear God, what about this? Lord, I want to know about this. Then they are pleaded with the Lord. This is the actual, one of the most important parts of His teaching us. Then I pleaded with the Lord. I want you to pause right now because there's a lot of people that are too proud that will not kneel down and pray. They will not come to the altar. They will not cry out to the Lord. They might go to their friends. They'll go to a bar and ask the bartender. They'll go to uh, someplace else. Hey, I'm having a problem here. I gotta do this. They'll go to other people. But I'll tell you, go to the Lord in prayer. Ask uh, iron shoppers iron. There's good, strong believers here that, that know what to do. They can ask you witnesses. They might plead with the Lord. This reminds me sometime we were a good big six foot six football player came and his daughter was really very ill. And there were the first group going, he says, I want you to pray for my daughter. He said, Yes, but you as a father need to get down and he says, Hey, I don't know for anybody. I said, Well, if you want to really hear God, you need to humble yourself. At the very end, he was allowing him as he was on his face, crying out before God. And God did the miracle and this guy go out for one of those of you that remember he stood up and testified how God healed, killed her before he was transferred to another football team. But here it says, then I'm the healer of the Lord. I'm here to say, understand this. But the Lord is here to us, there's a lot of people that are pleading to God. You know, when I was uh, a young man, I actually was invited to go speak in Mexico. And I and I saw all these ladies coming and men on their hands and their knees and they're dragging themselves and there was blood all over their knees and they're cutting themselves and they're trying to gain access to God. Lord, hear my cry. Lord, the scripture made it. It's why uh, I mean, we are strong. Lord, help me. Then I'm pleading with the Lord. The Lord is the source of sin. There's a lot of people that cry. They'll go out and, and they'll, they'll turn and pray, Lord, hear me. They'll do different things. My son was teasing me. He says, Dad, what happens if somebody is in the mall and they call their son, they name their son Allah Akbar. And if they call him Allah Akbar, everybody starts to read this and they die. But he says, but they call out to the different false gods. They really do. They'll call out, God, I'm here, God. I'll tell you, when we cry to the one true God, the Lord will hear us. Then I'm defeated. So the top four portion starts with something. The grass withers and they have to pay, but the word of God endures forever. Praise the Lord. This is part of our offering worship. It says, in the heaven that the, the, the God of the word is in the heaven. So the grass will wither in the heaven is made. And the flowers fade. The flowers fade. But I use a terrible font here. <laughs> but it says, do you not know? <laughs> I love these questions because all this time, even how much it, he asks questions. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits upon the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in, who brings a princess to nothing, and makes the rulers of the earth of emptiness. So here he's talking about something important. Don't you know? Don't you know about the things of God? And you're saying, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain? And spreads like it's in. This is talking about the prayer shawl, you guys. How God spreads his prayer shawl. In fact, the scriptures actually talk about the heavens and that they come uh, upon us. And I believe that the sun rays are like seed seeds that he sends here. By the way, Andy did a great job of explaining this. This is uh hero the Lord God the Lord is one, So this is important for us to understand. When, when we pray, so before we leave, I want to hear that you actually say this song or repeat it because we're Jews and Gentiles here that are praying. Oh my goodness. I, I did a word for you. Now I need something to help me here. I did a terrible thought here. The day that we look up, the day that we look up, Lord, can somebody read that? Or, or who's got to do it? Can you read it, please? Yeah, those who 
those who are waiting for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not be weary. So this particular portion is talking about the those that wait upon the Lord. I, sometimes we need to just wait on the Lord. Maybe you're in a situation, come on, I don't want to do something. Just wait. Wait on the Lord. I can give you an example, I can give you an example, but there's so many scriptures to talk about. The read of the job. This is Mark chapter 12. And they said to him, certain of the Pharisees and the Herodians, who kept him in the words, and they were like, hey, you're master, and character for all men. For you don't regard the person of him, but teach the way of God and truth. Is it lawful to get true to Caesar or not? They're trying to catch him in some way. They're trying to say, hey, let me catch you in something that you're saying wrong. They're trying to catch him in this. But you know what? There's a Pharisee. The Herodians are needless people. Now you may say the Pharisees are bad people. Actually, the Pharisees started off a very good people. During the Maccabees, they came and said, We're not going to lose out who we are. How many people remember about the history of the Maccabees? During the time of the yes. And then they there was a group, a second group, and they started wearing the Ashley and the Sea that was saved to us, or the Bayes and the Keepers and the, the Big Cats and everything. They're, 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 they said, we will never let Jerusalem fail. And they dedicated themselves. The Herodians were actually different kind of people that were all expected to the Herodians, but they were very legalistic. Then they came the Sadducees. And who in the world were the Sadducees? Anybody want to help me out? I, I who are the Sadducees? Very good. Say it again. They didn't believe in the resurrection. And what else did they didn't believe in? Angels. They believe in angels. In fact, Paul was before the 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 Sanhedrin you know to say there's some Pharisees and said and there's the Sadducees. So he put them against each other using psychology and it was back and forth. So the Sadducees would say there was no resurrection they asked him, Master Moses wrote unto us a man's blood God, leave his wife behind him and leave him over, but his brother should take his wife, raise up the seal of his brother. Now there were seven brothers and the first took his wife died in the middle sea. It went on and on and on. Now whose wife would she be in heaven? So now they were trying to catch him. And the Sadducees were very materialistic. They, they never today, me and mine. And so they were a different. We can actually see the Pharisees today. We can see the Sadducees today. We can see the Romans from we can actually see the scribes. Then it starts talking about the scribes. The Pharisees were legalistic and judgmental. The Sadducees were materialistic and great achievers. And the scribes. They were in love with the scriptures. They were on the Bible talks in this particular place. It's addressing them all. Who were the scribes? Are you going to help me out? Who were the scribes? Come on, guys. Who were the scribes? Tell us, John, tell There are the There you go. Yeah, there were those who wrote the Torah. There was no printing presses at that time. Yes, right. And also in their in the second room they had a court and they had two scribes on either side and they would document what was going on. That's why when Yeshua stood up, they blatantly uh, lied about what was going on and he was falsely accused. Yes. And he had a record of it. Yeah, very good. So so all these people I uh, know this and understand this. And the scribes no, I, I, in my, my visit to Israel years ago, I actually had an opportunity to sit next to a scribe as he was writing this book. Oh my goodness, what an experience. Has anybody seen or anybody write this book? That's good. What are the things we have to do now? Like actually, we have some, some letters, some letters that they write with, and we actually have part of the parcel. It's a uh, parcel that they have, and I'll, I'll let you guys write in the same ink here. It is beautiful. So he's writing the Torah, says, can I be with you in this? So he's writing the Torah, every letter is written down. That's why the Torahs are so expensive, because it takes over a year for them to write. That becomes the holy name of God. What does he do? He takes a shower. Takes us a kick, come on, come on. He takes a shower and he makes prayer, and while he writes the Torah scroll, he also gives us a tzedakah. He wants to make sure that it's being kosher in the Yes, and he gives a special pen. The holy name of God. That's why 
Almighty. It's all important for us to see the Holy Name of God. Then the, one of the scribes came in heaven, uh, heard, uh, heard that they were eating together, and he was eating that they had answered him well. He said, yes, he gives you the first commandment of all. He has the first commandment. And Yeshua answered him. He answered him. The first commandment is, hear all of is the hero of Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is born. So that's why he asked the show what is the first commandment. I'm asking you, what is the first commandment? Hero of Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord. Who's, who can say it in Spanish? Anybody can say it in Spanish? Says, you said it, the fellow said it. Oh, all you said it. I'm a man who has to say it. Who could say it in Portuguese? Let me just give you a preface to this. 
He was a uh, famous journalist, a cameraman, and he was in prison. And he went and says, I'm in America, and my, my buddy here, my cameraman, is, is a, uh, from Bosnia. French. 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 Oh, this is a place where Moses died. 
Was it Pisca or Nico? Which was the name? What was his right name? David. Same mountain. It's the same mountain. Why is it the same mountain? Different names. Because the Bible does that. It's able to give two names to one mountain. One mountain. Two names to a different individual. There was Job. Remember Job? Later on, his father was Issachar. His name was changed to Jason. Why? Wow, it's because Issachar got one of the sheens, the sheens from his name, and placed it in his son's name. So you can have the shalom of the Lord. And then there's white in the Torah, use different names for the mountains. What about Torah and Sinai? They have the same mountain here. Uh, so we can get this action of you. I was trying to get another thing later on because you can actually see Jerusalem lifted up above everything else, the mountain range. You shall not add the word of which I command you, neither shall you diminish the document that you keep the commandments of the word of God which I command you. The Bible, the Revelation says the same thing. Understand, we cannot add any words. There are some people that will actually give you, they'll actually give you, dear friends, here's a new book, a new revelation, something that is, is outstanding, a new, a new Bible. Never accept that. This is a cultish thing that does. And, and allow me, I, I shared with you last year, this is probably, I'll do it really quick, you guys, okay, allow me. Uh, my son, Baruch, he knows the Bible, those of you who don't see me, but he knows the Bible very good. And I received a phone call, and, and they have the call ID right, that says, this particular cult, and they have a different Bible. And they said, we want to go and watch the Shabbat, the Feast of Trumpets. And I told them, I said, well, let's get them to so but I noticed it was in the same, uh, not only area, but in the same uh, place where it started with the same two and three over there, the same prefix, too. So then I was waiting him home from football practice. He was dressed up all dirty, and he had taken a shower there. He says, Dad, I said, and I saw the two members of this particular cult walking because they're dressed very distinctly. He said, oh, my goodness, these must be the guys that are facing, that were asking me the question. I said, we got to play a trick on them. He said, what dad says, you were asking me about Rosh Hashanah, about the piece of trumpets. Play something with him. I said, okay, dad. So when they're walking, and I drop him off to the bus stop, and he's standing there, and they're walking close to him, and he, and he says, um, he says, you want to know when the Jewish nigger with the piece of trumpets is? And they almost come back. I was over there, and the close to the I was watching the whole thing. How did you know? My father just told me. <laughs> <laughs> and so they come and they, they start asking questions. They said, well, we have a new Bible. We have this. Is it? There's only one word of God. That's the Bible. That's from Genesis to Revelation. And he starts talking this way. He says, who has told you this? My father has told me. <laughs> and so he kept on saying this. How did you know? We were asking about this. Look at when he's dressed. He's dressed like that. Dirty old guy says, I have done the will of my father to let you know these things. And they're all blown away. Oh, my goodness. So we went and had a conversation later on for further on, and they keep on walking down. So Baruch, my son, comes and he comes and he runs really quick and hides beside him in the back of the building. And so they're walking, and they turn around and run to him. and say, where did he go? Where did he go? And I was an angel. Anyway, so but I'm going to tell you, there's only one word of God. Go, uh, go quickly. Now here, this is the partial that, that says this. There is no God or God. Okay, I'll say, who wants to say with me? Who's got the last place? There is no God.
three columns, you know, part God is one, he has three manifestations. Yeah. He has, he has the Yeshua, he has the, the uh, Ruach Hadesh, and he introduced him. Oh, I hear this. I never thought that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's very good. So then, that's why you know I'm not going to always go and run that. But it does it with shalom. Now here's this particular scripture. But it forbids you shall see the Lord your God. You shall find him. You seek him with your whole heart and with all your soul. Those of you that have had questions, <coughs> those of you that have been wondering, is God really listening to me? God, can you hear my prayer? Can you hear my prayer? This is the word of God. But if I'm here for you, shall seek the Lord your God. You shall find him. If you seek him with all your heart, with all your soul, the Lord will answer you. He will answer you prayer. Here's a lot of principle. By the first, by the way, the account of the Ten Commandments again. First out was from man. The second was from man to man. Don't bother to impress us in the book the first God if you're mistreating your fellow man with the second God. So in other words, serve the Lord, but go home and praise your wife. Serve the Lord, but go home and be that example to your children. Do that. And we don't have time to go to the Ten Commandments because uh, now we've talked about it in the time of Exodus, but we're going to finish up real quick. By the way, if you finish the Yes, yes. 